Okay, so have you ever like finished a film and you're just kind of left with this well, this unsettled feeling. Oh, yeah. Like something about it just sticks with you. Definitely. That's enemy for you. It gets under your skin, that's for sure. It's right. not your typical like Hollywood thriller, you know. Yeah. It's like this psychological puzzle box. Yeah. And director Dennis Villeneuve, he really knows how to use that to explore, I don't know, some pretty dark, pretty fascinating themes. A lot going on beneath the surface with this one, that's for sure. You're always kind of questioning like, what's real? What's imagined? Exactly. And yeah. it all circles back to that duality, the main character's psyche. It makes you think. Which brings us to today's deep dive. Mm -hmm. We're going deep into the twisted, and I mean twisted, world of enemy. Right. Unpacking all that symbolism, mm -hmm. the psychological thriller aspects, trying to make sense of that ending because... Wow, that ending. So are, are you ready to uh, unravel this enigma with me? Let's do it. Okay, so at the heart of it all, we've got Anthony and Adam, right? Two guys who look, well, they look incredibly alike, but their lives, night and day, completely different. Total opposite. And of course, they're both played brilliantly by Jake Gyllenhaal. Phenomenal actor. It's incredible, actually. His performance is really what sells that whole, like, identity crisis thing. Makes you question, right? Absolutely. Could you imagine living a double life? Right. So we've got Anthony's successful actor, seems to have it all. The beautiful wife who's pregnant. The cool guy persona. Even a motorcycle. Yeah, he's got that whole brooding artist thing going on. But you start to pick up on these little things, you know, like hints that Anthony isn't as content as he seems. He's searching for something more. Yeah. Which brings us to that scene, that club underground. Oh, yeah. With the... Uh, the spider. The spider. <laughs> That's our first real glimpse into, like, his darker impulses, you know? It's the whole other side of Anthony. The side he keeps hidden from the world. And that spider, it just <laughs> keeps coming back, doesn't it? It's this recurring motif weaving its way through the entire film. Adds a whole other layer of creepiness, I think. Definitely creepy. Then you've got Adam. And unlike Anthony's uh, glamorous life. Adam's is definitely not glamorous. Adam's this history teacher, totally stuck in a rut. Everything's very uh, mundane. Predictable. Yeah, it's almost like like looking at a life Anthony could have had. A path not taken. Exactly. And I think that's what's so unsettling for Anthony. It's like seeing this reflection of what could have been a simpler life. A life without all the pressures that come with, you know, Anthony's world. Right. And then things get really interesting when Adam stumbles across Anthony's existence. Oh, yeah. That scene where he sees him in that movie. It's like a light bulb goes off. Yeah. Suddenly, his own life, it all seems so inadequate. And that's where Enemy goes from a simple doppelganger story to something much, much darker. It's like, hold on, it's about to get real. They meet, they make this pact to switch lives for a night. And of course it blows up in their faces. I mean, what did they expect, right? Yeah. And that's when, well, Anthony's driving Adam's car with Adam's girlfriend. And then boom, the crash. And Anthony's thrust into this whole new reality. It's like, whoa, where do we even go from here? Right. Talk about a turning point. And this is where enemy shifts gears. It goes from like a simple doppelganger story to something much more uh, psychologically disturbing. Yeah, it gets like really unsettling. Because we start to get these hints that maybe, just maybe, there isn't an Adam at all. Okay, we... What if this whole time it's just been Anthony? Like he's wrestling with himself or something. So all this, these two separate lives, the apartments, the women. Yeah. It's its all in his head. Exactly. Like a manifestation of his own psyche, you know? Think about it. Adam's apartment, it was so stark, barely furnished. Remember? Yeah, it was like strangely empty. We were led to believe that it reflected his personality, right? Like, oh, he's this boring, routine-driven guy. But what if, and stay with me here, what if that was actually Anthony's secret love nest? Wait, hold on. You're saying that apartment, that was Anthony's? A place where he could escape, you know, away from the expectations, the public eye, all the pressures of his life. Okay. It changes how you see everything. And Adam's girlfriend. Think about her. She finds that hotel key. Right? Yeah. It's a clear sign of infidelity. You're suggesting she was Anthony's mistress. It would explain so much. The confrontation, the crash. It's like Anthony's subconscious self-destructs, you know? Wow. To clear the way for him to, to to fully embrace this this new identity as Adam. And don't forget about the spider. Oh, right. Yeah. The spider. Notice how after the crash, it becomes even more prominent, even more unsettling. It's almost like they're multiplying or something. Like they're crawling out of his subconscious or something, you know? They become this physical manifestation of everything he's trying to repress. The guilt, 
the desire. It's all there in those spiders. Villeneuve, he's a genius at using these visual metaphors to really get under your skin, you know, to tap into those deep-seated fears. And then there's the ending. Don't even get me started on that ending. Anthony's standing in the bedroom uh-huh. and his wife. She turns into a giant spider. I mean, what does it all mean? What's Villeneuve trying to say? I think it's the ultimate confirmation, you know? Like, Anthony hasn't changed at all. He's still trapped in this this horrific loop. Mm-hmm. And the spider, the symbol of his desires, it's consumed him. He might look like Adam now, but... <laughs> but he's still driven by those same primal urges. And that's what makes enemies so brilliant. It doesn't give you any easy answers, you know? You're left with more questions than when you started. It forces you to really think about the nature of identity, about the things we try to bury deep down inside. And the consequences of letting those desires run wild. Exactly. It really makes you think about those darker impulses. You yeah. Know? Like, can you ever really escape them? He tried to become someone else entirely, and it still wasn't enough. That's the question enemy really forces us to confront, right? It's like, are we ever truly free from those deeper desires, those urges? It reminds me of that old saying, like, be careful what you wish for or something. Because you just <laughs> might get it. Right. And then what? Anthony's story, it's almost like a cautionary tale. He gets that chance, you know, to become someone new, but it all goes so wrong. And what's really interesting is Villeneuve doesn't just point the finger at Anthony, you know. It's like he's asking all of us, what are you hiding? What's buried inside you waiting to break free? What happens when those desires take control? Exactly. And it's not always pretty. This film really makes you think. For anyone listening, if you haven't seen Enemy, well, definitely add it to your watch list. Guess one you'll want to talk about afterward, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. And even if you've seen it before, it's worth another watch with all this in mind, you know. Pay attention to the details. The way Villeneuve uses lighting, sound. It all builds this atmosphere that just gets under your skin. Think about the spider imagery, too. It's not just about desire, right? There's that fear of failure, maybe. Being trapped but by your own success. It's open to interpretation, which is what makes it so fascinating to dissect. Exactly. The kind of film that stays with you long after it's over, you know? Oh, yeah. You find yourself thinking about it, like, days later. You're left with this lingering sense of unease. And a whole lot of questions. Which is the mark of a truly great psychological thriller, in my opinion. It should mess with your mind a little make you ask those uncomfortable questions, even if you don't like the answers. And Enemy, it definitely delivers on that front. It makes you confront those shadows within yourself, for sure. And sometimes, well, those are the scariest monsters of all, aren't they? The ones we create ourselves. That's Enemy for you.